Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Thornberg. This is part three in my measles lecture series. This is the part where I look at the CDC data. So the CDC claims that because of the measles vaccine, we've had a reduction in the incidence of measles deaths by 95%. However, this statement is not true. Let's look at the data. So measles was first identified as a reportable disease in 1912. And from 1912 until 1922, there were 6,000 measles deaths per year. Now fast forward to 1953. From 1953 until 1963, and remember the vaccine was not registered until 1963, there were 400 to 500 measles deaths per year. So we had a decrease from 6,000 measles deaths per year to 400 to 500 measles deaths per year before the vaccine even came out. And why did that decrease happen? It's because improvements in our community. We had better access to medical care. We had better water Water sources. We had better sanitation. We had better nutrition. And we also understood that vitamin A is hugely important in minimizing the complications from measles. So it's not because of the vaccine that we've seen a decrease in complications. It's because of the improvements in our infrastructure that resulted in a decrease in measles complications. Now, once the vaccine did come out in 1963, we did see a decrease in the total number of measles cases, but we have not seen a change in the number of measles cases per 1,000 cases, which means the vaccine has not helped reduce the incidence of complications, it's just reduced the total number of cases. So you could argue that since we don't have as many cases, that means that the complication rate is lower. And that is true. But we need then look at what are these complications that the CDC highlights. There's five complications that they measure. Ear infections, diarrhea, pneumonia, subacute sclerosing, panencephalitis, and last death. The incidence of these five complications have not decreased in their frequency per 1,000 measles cases because of the vaccine. The CDC goes on to report between 1987 and 2000, 30% of measles cases had one or more complications. That doesn't make sense given all the other data that I just provided. And when we look at the incidence of each of those five complications, they're very small. For instance, per 1,000 cases of measles, there's 60 ear infections pre and post vaccine. There's 60 cases of diarrhea per 1,000 cases of measles, pre and post vaccine errors. There's 0.1 per 1,000 cases of measles of subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. And the incidence of death per 1,000 cases is one to three. Again, no difference between pre and post vaccines. The statement that 30% of measles cases had one or more complications just doesn't make sense given all the other data there. What we're not able to identify on the CDC website is what comorbidities are existing. What else is happening with these kids that might then result in a 30% chance of, of having a complication to measles. And we can't find any of that data. So we don't know if these kids are immunocompromised. We don't know if they're obese. We don't know if they have diabetes. We don't know what their access to medical care is. And when we look back at my first video on measles and we look at West Texas, we can see that the hospitalization rate at 27% can easily be explained given the poor social economic lack of medical availability in that community. Remember, for the 35 counties in West Texas, there isn't a single physician. And They don't have great access to transportation to get to a doctor is very far. So a lot of these hospitalizations can be a result of other issues and not just the complications. Additionally, ear infections, probably one of the most common reasons a a baby, child, toddler, teen comes into my office. So having that listed as a complication is... (laughs) let's call it at best, an accelerator, a steroid to make your numbers look a little bit higher. Same thing with diarrhea. I mean, diarrhea is is not something that results in death in a community that has access to medical care. Diarrhea is easily treated in the hospital, put an IV in. Again, if you live in a community that doesn't have proper access to medical attention, or you come from a family that has a lack of available resources, whether that's from education or financially, then this can contribute to an increased complication rate. For most of the country, this is not a reason to vaccinate. As we start to strip down all of these numbers, we can see the idea that measles is a disease that can be prevented. It isn't panning out once we start looking at these numbers. I think that we really need to identify that the CDC has some bias in their framing data, that there's an over emphasis on complications and vaccine necessity that's not being held out by the numbers once we look a little bit deeper. How many deaths have there been from measles since 2000 through 2024? Three. 
three deaths. Ear infections, diarrhea, two of the listed complications, not a big deal. Pneumonia obviously can be a big deal. Subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, obviously very big deal. But again, remember, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, 0.1 per 1,000 cases, not the reason that we're having so many complications. Death, one to three, not the reason that we're having so many complications. Following the CDC that there's 30% complication rate, it's because kids are having ear infections. I mean, it's a bogus, it's a bogus number and it's creating bogus outcomes. So the takeaway is that vaccine did reduce the number of cases, but not the case severity. Measles deaths did drop prior to the vaccine, 95%. So the statement on the CDC website is inaccurate. So scientific literacy is the key. Hopefully you've learned how to, with a keen eye, go through the data to see if there's any inconsistencies or where the data is coming from. And um, thanks for watching.